Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's experiment with some wiffle balls. So if you've watched several of my videos, you know I like to use wiffle balls to kind of hold the shape of a tall deep scrunch. But this time I decided to put the wiffle ball underneath the shirt and then tie a rubber band down at the base of the wiffle ball. What that's going to do is that's going to make the wiffle ball tight underneath the fabric. Normally when I do a tall deep scrunch and I use wiffle balls, I just kind of lay the shirt over the top of the wiffle balls, but the shirt or the fabric isn't wrapped totally around the wiffle ball. It's just barely touching the tops of the wiffle ball. So I thought, let's see what happens with this technique. So for this experiment, I'm using the baseball size wiffle balls and I'm going to use an odd number of them. I'm going to use five, place them underneath the shirt and then just wrap a rubber band down at the base to hold the wiffle ball in place. I was tying some other shirts this day, so I put it aside and I came back to it the next day and by then it had totally dried out. It doesn't have to be dry though. So initially I placed the shirt inside of a basket, which I had on top of another basket to keep it up out of the muck. And I started applying the ice to the very top of the shirt, kind of pushing it down into the area between the wiffle balls. But I noticed that quite a bit of my ice was falling through the holes and going down in the bottom of the container. So I decided to scrap this method and instead I placed the shirt down inside of another container that has a solid bottom, but it does have holes in the side. I've used this container before, so it is going to hold some of the muck down inside and the very bottom of the shirt is going to sit in some muck, but it's going to, for the most part, drain away from the shirt. By the way, I keep using the term muck. What muck is, is it is just the melting ice that's mixed with the dye. It's not bad for a shirt to sit down in the muck. That's actually a tie dye technique. But for this one, I wanted to kind of try and see what it looked like if I did not allow it to sit in the muck. So I'm going to kind of do an in-between technique, semi-muck dyeing. I went ahead and continued to add more ice to the shirt and I added enough ice to cover the entire top of the shirt. I want to make sure I don't have any large chunks of fabric sticking up above the ice. I'm going to apply the dye to the top of the ice for a couple of reasons. I think it gives the shirt a little softer look, kind of a little more watercolor, and it also highlights the color splits a little bit more, I think. From here, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of each of the dye colors over the top of the ice, and I'm going to just randomly sprinkle the colors. I'm trying not to add too much dye. I tend to be a little bit heavy handed, so that's kind of tough for me sometimes, but I want to see the color splits and I think that gets highlighted a little bit better if you don't use too much dye. The colors that I'm using are Willow, Medieval Brown, Dark Forest, and Forest Floor, which are all dye spin colors. And then I'm going to add a little bit of avocado from Dharma Trading Company. Once I have all the dye on the shirt, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of additional soda ash over the top, and then I'm going to place this container aside and allow the ice to melt. Once all the ice melted, I allowed the shirt to process or batch for about 24 to 36 hours. Okay, so here's what the shirt looks like before I started rinsing. As you can see, there's just a little bit of muck down in the container, but not very much. I started rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I went ahead and untied the shirt, took the wiffle balls out, and I gave the wiffle balls a quick rinse with water just to wash off any residue from the dye. Because of the hard plastic that these wiffle balls are made from, I haven't ever had any kind of an issue with the dye sticking to the wiffle balls though. They rinse off really well. Then I warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. When the water was running almost clear, I put the shirt along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and washed it using a hot water cycle. Then after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. 
Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one looks kind of cool. I don't really know what I was expecting, um, but I think it kind of looks like woods or moss or honestly, the more I look at it, I think it looks like lily pads, but I do think it looks cool. I like all the varying shades of green and the different color splits that came out of the green, kind of the brownish type color that's on this shirt, a little bit of a golden yellow color. It definitely looks very woodland to me. You can see the areas where I had the wiffle balls because those are kind of circles of dye, which I think is kind of a cool effect. It's not hugely different though than if I used wiffle balls for a tall deep scrunch. I say that, but I do think that where the wiffle balls were on the shirt is much more defined. It isn't that defined when I use wiffle balls for a tall deep scrunch. So what do you guys think? I think I'm gonna call this one Woodland Wiffle, but do you think it looks woodland or do you think it looks more like a lily pad on a murky pond? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed watching the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit that bell, it'll notify you whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.